couple of weeks ago, and they held nothing back in exploding the myth of Rock's romance with drugs and revealing the frustrations of running a band with junkies in it. We began with Chamberlain's own drug history, which had sent him into rehab before. You had faced the question of Jimmy's drug addiction in the past. As you began the tour, though, it was your impression, just for the record, that he was no longer using drugs of any kind. Who? Not drugs of any kind, but hard drugs. Heroin. Right. Heroin, cocaine. I spoke to Jimmy Chamberlain and Billy Corgan at the beginning of their summer tour in Indiana. There, Jimmy talked openly about drugs as if they were part of his distant past. Getting, you know, flown around the world. You know, having living in an unreality that becomes reality where you can do anything you want to do and somebody will pay for it. Because, you, you know, it puts you in a mindset that's very dangerous and very self-destructive. Were you aware at that time that he was still battling drug use? Or that it was recreational? We, we were really under the impression that, that he was having these kind of little weekend warrior blowouts but that basically was under control and we were, we were being made to believe that we were being told the truth at every step of the way, which we later found out wasn't true at all. It's always a tragedy when that happens because it's not necessarily always the artist's fault. That's more both drug addict excuses. I'm sorry, but that's just more excuses. The fact of the matter is, is you're a human being, you have responsibilities not only to yourself but to others. What are you doing? The European leg of the Infinite Sadness Tour was plagued by problems centering around Jonathan Melvoin and Jimmy Chamberlain last spring. The band offered to stop their tour so Jimmy could seek treatment, but he insisted he didn't need it. Surprisingly, the Pumpkins managed to keep the drug situation private, despite the severity of the problems they were having. There were two overdoses prior to this particular overdose. By Jimmy or Jonathan? Uh, the first one involved Jimmy and the second one involved both of them. And did you, at that point, sit Jimmy and Jonathan down to say... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Firing had, is an option here. We had a long, comical talk where they told us, you know, it'll never happen again, and, and we're really sorry, and uh, gee, yeah. we, we realize we're destroying our lives here, and, uh, you know, and John, everyone else. Jonathan's like, I have a baby and a wife and responsibility, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity, and Jimmy's like, yeah, I have so much to lose, and we're really sorry, and... It, just, you know, we, you know, in hindsight, we're, we look stupid, but we, at, at, the time, say, we, at the time, we really wanted to believe. We actually did fire Jonathan. We did fire him. He was fired for about a um, month. He was just going to finish up the end of the tour. The end and of the then, Europe tour. Yeah, the one leg of the tour. And uh, he was a, a sweet sweet man, a really wonderful person, and um, we didn't know him for very long, we didn't know his history, and we ha he came to me, basically, and sounded, not only convinced me, he had himself obviously convinced that he was cleaning up his act, and I didn't realize, I, I don't know his history, I still really don't. We, gave, we really we gave believed him, another, him. We gave him a chance to prove himself, chance to and prove he did. Himself. He did for the rest of that tour. The two of them were, you know, on their best behavior. And you want to believe yeah, that, that they're going to be okay. It was difficult for the band to detect Jimmy's heroin use due to the lack of obvious physical signs. All we had was our intuition telling us that something wasn't right. That Jimmy wasn't always in the right mind at all the right times. But you got to understand, he was hiding it so well that you were never quite sure. And when you, when you believe that someone's telling you the truth and you say, okay, now you're gonna tell me the truth, right? Oh yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Is everything fine? Everything's totally fine. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go after mom? I mean, this is a 31-year-old man. Did you notice in playing um, well, on he tour? Was playing this erratically, but I honestly, I, I didn't know what the problem was. Just days before the band was to play New York City, they confronted Jimmy about his drug use again, but he insisted he was clean. This denial made it more shocking when the news came that Jimmy had overdosed and Jonathan had died of the combined effects of alcohol and heroin. I was especially just absolutely just numbed, literally numbed. I thought I had dropped the phone out of my hand because I couldn't feel my hand anymore. The members of the band were taken down to New York City's 19th precinct and questioned. 
it was kind of absurd. They split us up, like, on the TV shows and took us in separate rooms and questioned us to see if our answers would match up. We're like, this isn't real. This is, this is like some kind of cliche. I'm living a cliche. We are, the, we are now the rock and roll cliche. Jimmy Chamberlain has a September 26th hearing in New York on his heroin possession charge. He's still in drug rehab, and so far we've had no success trying to reach Chamberlain for comment on what his ex-bandmates have to say about him. We'll have... For every person that questions this kind of decision, they didn't sit with him on a bus at 4 in the morning where he called us all sorts of names. They didn't see him not show up for practice and just completely disappear. They didn't have a recording session with him where he just completely disappeared. You didn't even know if he was dead, and then you're hearing reports, oh yeah, he went to the REM concert, you know? They didn't live through all these things. He's an amazing drummer. He, he, if, if he's not the best drummer of his period, he's top three. There are very few Jimmies in the world, and that certainly played into our denial of it because it was very hard to face his removal and what it would do to the band. It's amazing you find these these big, big tragedies creeping up at like the worst times. You know, you're like in the middle of a tour. You know, you're in the middle of a record. Somebody, somebody decides to go off the deep end. They don't go off the deep end when they're sitting at home watching TV. They go off the deep end when you you need them and you 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 you'll excuse their behavior because you have to deal. Why did you need him so much? Why was he so valuable to you? Listen, any way you cut it, Jimmy it, Jimmy is an original member of the band. And when we all started, the four of us, nobody gave two f's about us. Nobody, zero, nobody. I mean, we used to beg, beg friends and family to come to the show so we wouldn't be embarrassed, okay? Nobody cared about us. We built our little egg up to the point where we were on TV and people cared and come to the concerts, okay? It's not so easy to turn around and go, you know, I want to remove this 25% of this such a successful thing that's totally changed my life. You know, I just want to toss you just out just to see what will happen. There's a fear there that you're going to blow the little balloon up and there ain't going to be nothing left. Well. What we're trying to say to people is, we finally faced that fear. We said, we don't give a f if it destroys the band. Who the f cares? He's got to go for himself and for us. And so we're carrying on without him. If people don't like it, if we suck, whatever, that's rock and roll tragedy. But the fact of the matter is, is we face that fear. We're beyond, we are now beyond the point where we have to worry about whether or not Jimmy's going to explode tomorrow. <laughs> What's the point of having a band that's so screwed up that there is no band, there is no heart? I mean, for a band that talks about heart and, and, and faith and all these things to be going around with this kind of dirty secret under the, under the covers, we just couldn't take it anymore. While Billy Corgan will take responsibility for the musicianship in the band, he won't be blamed for what the members do on their own time. We're human beings, you know? We, 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 we didn't do everything perfect. We didn't say the right things at every step of the way. We did our best. But to try to go back and recalculate the moment and the thing, you know, meanwhile, while all this was going on, we're on a rock tour, you know? We got our own crap to deal with. We, we're, you know, I, I wake up every day wondering if I can even talk. You know, the, you know, we're all dealing with our own little dramas here. Uh, so all I'm trying to say is the world needs to stop defining these kinds of tragedies by the pe what the people around them did and didn't do. The simple fact of the matter is these two up. They totally and they didn't just up once, they three times. And after the first time we were like, whoa. After the second time it was like, this is crazy. This is totally insane. If a man can't keep himself from doing those kinds of things with everything to lose, his band, his life, his status, his economic and whatever future, if he can't stop himself from picking up something from that, What's going to stop him, us? Is any part of you hopeful that Jimmy's getting the help that he needs now and he'll be successful in getting it under control? No. Are you in contact with him? Do you know? Is... No. He's out of our life. 110%. The band picked up the pieces by hiring two temporary fill-ins for the tour. Matt Walker from Filter and Dennis Flemian from The Frog. A month and a half after Jonathan Melvoin's death, the Pumpkins relaunched their tour. I was hoping uh, they weren't going to cancel because they're a real favorite band of mine. And when I heard that they were, they had that problem, I thought, boy, I hope they don't break up because of this. Yeah, that would suck. They were awesome considering what just happened. I, I think it was awesome. Wanna go for a ride? We faced the boogeyman, and you know what? It's fine. 
we're totally fine and the band sounds great and we're going to go on tour and you know what it's not going to be a sad violin tour at all it's going to be exactly the opposite we're going to go out and have a good time and are you changing anything else smiles we're small smiles now we're smiling now the new the new pumpkin <laughs>